Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Safe Baby's Guide to Implementation of the Parenting Action Plan. I'm Yen Nong, a member of the Texas Safe Babies team in Houston, Texas. I coordinated the implementation of the Texas Safe Baby Study, and from that experience, will share with you lessons learned to ensure your implementation of the Parenting Action Plan is a success. In this module, we will discuss why we want to implement the Parenting Action Plan and its components. And this point forward, I will refer to the Parenting Action Plan as the PAP. To give you a bit of background, in the 84th Texas Legislative Session, funds were allocated to develop and evaluate research-based prevention programs aimed at reducing maltreatment in infancy and improved child health outcomes. These efforts created the Texas Safe Babies Program, which is focused on supporting new parents through the first year after the baby is born. One initiative developed from the Texas Safe Babies Program was the PAP. We know the first year of a baby's life is the most stressful for any caregiver. Lack of sleep, possible stress and anxiety, Increased infant crying and feeling frustrated in trying to handle it all can create a vicious cycle. To ensure babies are healthy and thriving, we needed to provide better support to maternal caregivers and their families. The PAP was developed with the idea that providing maternal caregivers with basic and consistent parenting education and support will help them develop positive coping skills for infant crying increase their parenting self-efficacy, help them have realistic expectations about sleep, highlight the importance of mental health and self-care, suggestions for play to foster healthy bonding and child development, and how to care for a newborn by planning ahead. Having it implemented at the pediatric clinics during well infant visits was ideal since caregivers often frequent pediatric clinics, especially during the baby's first year of life. This outlines the change model that was tested in our initial studies. We expected that support provided to maternal caregivers about infant crying, bonding, safety, and sleep through the PEP while employing motivational interviewing principles will help these caregivers have positive coping skills and realistic expectations toward their infants that will result in overall improved maternal well-being and positive thoughts and beliefs about their babies. Initial studies were conducted to measure how receptive maternal caregivers of newborns would be to the PAP and whether it provided an effective level of support during the infant well visits. Four pediatric clinics in Southwest Houston and a total of 585 moms and newborns seeking care at those clinics participated in the effectiveness study. Evaluation results indicated that maternal caregivers who received the PAP had increases in positive parental attributions toward their babies in comparison to women who did not receive the PAP. These women saw that they had more control over situations than children. Further, they had more positive attitudes about children. In other words, women who received the PAP had reductions in the attitudes that lead to the concerning statements such as, my baby is crying because she hates me, and my baby is being bad to get back at me. This positive result has led to the current implementation study that will expand the distribution of the PAP to other ped pediatric clinics across Texas. And we are so glad you are part of this expansion. We've talked a lot about the PAP so far, but what is the PAP? The PAP is a booklet that contains information on the topics such as bonding with baby, soothing and coping with a crying infant, developing an infant sleep routine, and having realistic expectations regarding infant sleep, the importance of maternal rest and self-care, how playing and talking to baby can help with brain development, choosing safe caregivers for, for when baby needs to be left with someone else, and lastly, home and car safety issues. Again, the PAP should be administered to maternal caregivers to present with their baby at the two-week well infant visits and should become part of routine care until the baby's sixth month of life. The PAP should enhance what is already provided during the well infant visits, and it's a tool for clinic staff to use with motivational interviewing to help maternal caregivers think through and make plans that can help 
ensure the health and well-being of their infants during a highly stressful time. Motivational interviewing is an effective way of talking with people to elicit change or get them to make plans for possible difficult situations in the near future. It is a method of communication rather than a set of techniques. It is a person-centered, goal-oriented approach for facilitating change, making strategies, and planning ahead by exploring and resolving ambivalence. We will have a module dedicated to motivational interviewing to assist those implementing the path to do it successfully. These are examples of the PAP with these are examples of the content within the PAP. The length of time necessary to go through the PAP depends on the maternal caregivers and the questions and answers shared during the discussion. But on average, it can, it can be completed in approximately 10 to 20 minutes. It is to be used as a guide for, for pediatric clinics to better support maternal caregivers and something they can take home to help remind them of what was discussed. We will also have a separate module dedicated to the components of the PAP to thoroughly review its contents. This concludes the introduction to the Safe Babies program and why we are widely distributing the PAP to pediatric clinics across Texas. We look forward to meeting you again in our subsequent training modules that takes you through the planning for implementation of the PAP and targeted training in how to successfully implement it. Thank you for your time today.